lesson number 25. YouTube is now compatible with widescreen videos. You can see the whole piece then. Okay, we'll learn handicapped games today. Playing a handicapped game is a good way for shogi beginners to learn shogi. So, I think it's a good thing to teach you about it. In shogi, we create handicaps by making a difference in the numbers of pieces between the players by removing some pieces from one player. We call the player whose pieces are removed handicap giver, uate in Japanese. It means spare a move. And the other, handicap taker, shitate, which means inferior move. You guys might well be shogi beginners, so you'll probably be playing shitate for the time being. I'm not sure, but I learned that the traditional way of setting up a handicapped game is to first set up an even game and then Wate removes his pieces and put them in a the box. But never mind. Alright, uh, when you notate a handicapped game, we always make it look as what it's seen from Shitate's viewpoint. Because, you know, if you ever want to notate a handicapped game, in a book or something, that must be meant for those who play shitate. And you want to make it easy for them to understand, right? So shitate is always notated by the color black. And wate, white. So, which player plays first? You think shitate does because he's black? Well, it's a little confusing, but we have a special rule for handicap games, which is wate always plays first. So, in the game notation, it starts with the white move. Yeah, I know, it's confusing. Oh, and Shitate always uses the king with a dot. Okay, now I'll show you the variations in handicapped games. We have many kinds of handicapped games with different degrees of handicap according to how big is the level gap between the players. The biggest handicap we have is this. We often call it Hadaka Gyoku, Naked King. I don't think it's an official one. We seldom see this. We only use this when we teach Shogi to a complete novice and let him practice on how to mate a king. I think a stalemate can happen in this game. I'm not sure how we should end the game in this case. Maybe what it just resigns. Okay, after you finished, I mean graduated from Naked King, we sometimes play this handicap. It's a bit peculiar one. I think it's not an official one either. Wate has three pawns in hand. We call this Husanbyo, three pawns. You know what Wate's first move would be? it'll definitely be pawn 8f. If you take it, your bishop's dead. Oh no. Well, let's abandon the bishop and play static rook. What's gonna happen now? Maybe Wate will go like this. And your lance is dead too. Oh, is it better to drop the pawn first? This might be better. So anyway, the right way to react to what is first move is gold 7h or silver 7h and the threat is gone. You can win the game. So three pawns is meant to teach you reading opponent's hidden intention and not being tricked. Oh, and I'm not sure if I should even need to talk about this, but there's also a very special rule variant of three pawns where Wate is allowed to play two pawns or more in the file. Well, I think this rule suddenly turns it to be a very complicated game. I think it's pretty hard to win. If you play gold 7h, I guess he'll play like this. Your bishop is still threatened to be taken. Let's see. How about opening this hatch and give it escape route?
Oh, it doesn't work. It's pretty difficult. But uh, I think this rule is ridiculous. Allow two pounds or more in the file. It's not suitable for teaching shogi to a beginner, so you don't have to play it. Forget this rule variant. Alright, after you finish three pawns, we go to this. We call it 10 piece handicap. Because what is 10 pieces are removed. This one is still easy for you to win. After that, we go to this. 8 piece handicap. Now, what they can use the gold to defend. If you push this pawn, what they has to move the gold to here, because you can move your bishop to here and attack this one, so he has to defend it. So what they use is the gold to defend widely, but what you should do is just pile your attackers to a single square, and I recommend attacking the edge. And you can break the enemy front. or. You can use climbing silver strategy, bogeying. You just bring the silver to here and attack. Now what are you going to do? You draw back? No, you don't. You can abandon the silver. If it escapes, it's over, so you'll take it. Now, do you see a good move here? How about this? Now you won the game. Now we go to six-piece handicap. It's just that only the silvers are added to it and you still have a big handicap. But you see, if you compare it with 8-piece handicap, Lattes can now looks as though it has very, very powerful defense, doesn't it? And I'm sure 6-piece handicap and the followings are official rules. 8-piece and 10-piece might be also official, but I'm not sure. Now, what you should do here is, again, attack the edge. Have you heard this word? Joseki. It means standard move, which tells you how to move your pieces properly in each opening strategies. And there are Josekis for these handicapped games as well. So I'll show you one of the Josekis for six piece handicap. You aim at this edge. Now you have to move this pawn so that you can keep this bishop in this diagonal. Now he tries to defend by the gold. Now what are you going to do? Well, Joseki tells us to abandon the bishop here. This way you can bring your rook into what is camp. If you don't abandon the bishop and simply save the lance, it won't be easily breached. Now let's go to four piece handicap. He has two knights. The edges are better defended, but he still has no lance, so the edges are still the weak points. So again, you should still go for the edge. Joseki tells you to use a more advanced tactic here. First, exchange the pawns here. And you get one pawn in hand. This is critical. You need this pawn. Then advance the silver and push the edge pawn. And attack the edge. Now what? You don't take it immediately. It doesn't work. So, 
you use this tactic. It's called karefu, dangling palm. You might not understand what this is for. Well, it's a time bomb. See what happens. You take it. Now let's not care about this silver and promote this pawn. And you're doing very good. Or, Joseki rather recommends abandoning your silver first and then promote it. This is even better. Alright, in the next lesson, I'll show you the rest of handicapped games. See you.